together and welcome to Straight Talk with Kevin and Kevin. My name's Kevin and this is Kevin. Hey, How you doing, Pastor? Good. How are you, sir? Good. God bless you. Um, it's been a great week this week, but rainy. Yeah, rainy. You know, I do my 60-second <laughs> devos every day and I try to give the weather, the weather what, what's going on with the weather. Yeah. And every day it's been around, I don't know, 32 degrees. Yeah. One morning I got up, it was like 27 degrees. 20, it's cold. Yeah. And in other parts of the country, it's snowing. Yeah, it's snowing. We haven't seen any snow. Do you like the but, snow? Uh, I don't like driving in it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like driving it. I like to visit it. Yeah. When we go to the mountains, I, I'm just praying that it stays up at Mount Hood and they get yeah. lots of snow and then on the floor level here. Yeah. That it's it stays all good. Nice and, and maybe dry. on Christmas Day. How's that? Yeah. I wonder if anybody <laughs> out there on Periscope land, uh, is it snowing where you guys are? Let us know. We'd love to stay away from there. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Anyway, we're praying for no, you No, some guys. people just don't know how to drive in snow. It's, it's true. It's, and it's... You know, it's dangerous. And it's, people, it's not people, you that don't know how to drive. Well, I'm not that great at it, but I'm good at I just keep it slow, and I don't go through intersections like 50 miles an hour, right. and then you see these people that slide across the intersection, yeah. and that's what happens, and so it's, it can be a mess. So And then it's raining a lot. <laughs> yeah. But it's raining a ton, and, and to be honest, I love what the rain brings to us, and that's a sermon in itself. Yep. But I don't like having to walk out in the rain and getting all wet and, yeah. you know, and all that stuff. But so you're going to be in Texas. Texas. It's probably not <laughs> raining in Texas. I got family in Texas. You got family in Texas? You? No, no Yeah, family. I got family in Texas. All mine's in the South, man. I'm, we're all from the South. So. Hey, did you watch football South last Carolina. night? Did I watch football? No, I didn't get to watch it. What happened? Green Bay. Did they win? They did. <laughs> they won. Detroit, oh. I'm telling you. Made Detroit, Jordan. I know. Made I wrote Jordan. it right. So did, they were down by 20 points, <laughs> and they came all the way back. They were down by two points, and the clock expired, and they didn't score. Wow. But on that play, Detroit face masked them, or at least supposedly face masked. There's a little controversy on that. Yeah. So they got one more play with no time on the clock, and he – aired that ball like 80 yards into the end zone, and they caught it and won with no time on and the that's, clock. And that goes right along with your sermon, Game Changer. That's right. Game it was change, a game changer. <laughs> game changer. But I wrote Megan Jordan. Well, actually, I wrote the world and said, if you didn't believe in God before now, you should reconsider because the, the prayer of a righteous woman availeth much, and her Green Bay Packers won. Anyway, yeah. we're not talking about that today, but, uh, you know, it, it's, it's good to have those expectations, which we are talking about. Those great expectations, expectations yep. and it comes with a lot of change. You yeah, know? it's important too. I mean, like when we play, when I played sports, you know, when I pitched, I always I went out there expecting. I always went out expecting as a pitcher to throw either a perfect game or a no hitter. Mm -hmm. That was my goal to see if I could hold them with no score and to see if they get minimal hits. And I always went out there trying to throw a no hitter, and that's mm -hmm. that's hard to do, you know. And I came. A couple outs from throwing no hitter. I only threw, I threw a couple really? one hitters. Wow. You know, and like, and uh, then I had a no hitter going, in a game, and they the only run I lost one to nothing, and it was because uh, the guy scored got on base on an air, mm. and went all the way around the bases. So it's like I didn't know you were a pitcher. <laughs> yeah, I pitched in college wow. and everything. So yeah, I played center field. <laughs> center field. Never played in college though. Just but I always went out expecting that I was gonna throw this, mm -hmm. this is what I just wanted to try to do as an mm -hmm. accomplishment as a pitcher, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I think you got to have those expectations for your life, and the same thing, I'm, an expe I'm expecting this, this good things to happen, instead of expecting, a lot of us expect the worst, you know, and uh, instead of expecting God's best, mm -hmm. you know, we always have the scenario of like, why you always have a plan B or C or a door right. B or C, like, okay, if this doesn't work out, if God doesn't come through, I'm going to go through... Well, no, why don't you stick to mm -hmm. plan A, the mm -hmm. God's blessing, God's provision, and that he's going to do that instead of having a, your other options of, like, if this doesn't work out, I'm going to do this or this right. or this. Right. So, That's so true. That yeah. is so true. Hey, listen, before we get into the show, uh, we're talking about change and expecting the best from the Lord uh, with that change. But um, we want to connect with you in person, and so I wanted you to just share with our viewers where they could go if they yeah. wanted to get to our a website church. Our website is uh, www.lifechangersalem.com, and then also you can connect with us on Facebook. And our service time is at 6 p.m. at 210 Liberty, right down here across from the Grand Hotel. Mm -hmm. 6 p.m., we're Saturday night service, so if you like going on Saturday night, you like the night service, and you, you know, you got things going on or your schedule doesn't work out for you on Sundays, 
great place to come. Great, great people. Great worship. The growing church. You know, we're it's better than going to the it's, club. It's better than the going to the club that's going on down here. I mean, we got <laughs> we got some great things going on in here. Some great things. Yeah. In the Spirit of God moving and. So if you want to come to a church on Saturday nights, just come and check us out. Mm-hmm. You know, we have kids' church and all that stuff going on. Lifechangersalem.com. You can get all the information about their church. Pastor Kevin and Gloria Pemble, great people. You're going to fall in love with them. Uh, if you're a Sunday morning goer, you can come check us out on Sunday morning. Same building, 210 Liberty Street Southeast at Connection Life Church in downtown Salem, Oregon. 210 Liberty Street Southeast across the street from the Grand Hotel. You can go to clcsalem.org to get all of our information, um, our times, our events. We'd love to connect with you. And I always want to invite you that if any, at any time, if you're uh, moved or touched by the discussions that we have at Straight Talk, you can go to any one of our sites, either one of our sites, and go to our contact page. We'd love to hear from you and how God is moving in your life. All right. So uh, yeah, let's get going. Yeah, we're talking about change and yeah, I just great had a, expectations. I had a few things in this, you know, about expect expecting things. I know uh, Matthew six. I just want to start with that. I just believe that expecting th- change is uh, for me. I believe is uh, putting God first in the equation mm-hmm. and stuff. And and Matthew six uh, thirty three. It's one of my favorite scriptures. It says, but I'll read in the Amplified. It says, but seek, aim after, strive after. First of all his kingdom, his righteousness, his way of doing and being right, and then all these things taken together will be given given to you besides. And then one, one translation in the King James says, be added unto you. So a lot of times we're trying to add things to ourselves. We're trying to do it. Mm-hmm. I think seeking first the kingdom and God's way. Now, how does God, how does God do, thing, mm-hmm. do things? How does he speak? How does he act? You know, when he... He tells us in the Bible, we're going a little bit about that today. I know you had Mark eleven twenty three mm-hmm. says says that we don't talk about the mountain. He says that we can say to the mountains, be removed and be cast in the sea. And some of us are like, Well, I don't you know, how do I change? How do I do you know, how do I do these things? Well, seeking first how God does it. Whereas you're as you're a child of God, you gotta learn how you act now as a child of God, how you talk as a child of God. As we're growing up, you know, uh, we start mimicking mm-hmm. sounds and stuff. Mm-hmm. You see your kids right. and they start they start, and you, you're all celebrate when they say dad, dad, mm-hmm. you know, it's like, and they start learning words and stuff. And the same thing when we come to, when we come to Christ, it's, uh, um, it's a new conversation, how we speak, how I used to speak mm-hmm. was I just spoke the problem as I saw it. I, I just, you know, this is the way it is. This is the way it looks. It's all, you know, I don't know how to change it. I'm going to tell everybody, okay, this is what the report says. This is what my bank account says. And I just, I just told it like it is. God says, don't, don't tell it like it is. Tell it the way that my promises say that it can be mm-hmm. in the way that it is. Mm-hmm. And start saying, you know, seeking first, how does God talk? You know, he speaks to the mountain. He calls those things into existence that aren't there right. yet. Right. You know, and you say, how can you do that? I, my bills are here. How can you say that they're paid for when they're not paid? Yeah. Well, that's that's how God talks. You got to learn how you talk as a child of the king. Mm-hmm. And it's 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 a renewing like we talked last week about transforming your mind, learn, learning how to talk the world. Go ahead. They talk it. They, they see it and they go ahead and call it the way it is. Yeah. They, they speak out the negative or actually, the, you know, like you're hearing the news with all this tragedy mm-hmm. that's going on with the shooting. They start forecasting other things that could happen that haven't even happened yet mm-hmm. and putting putting fear into the people instead of us like, okay, let's stop this now and pray and expect that God's going to change things. So yeah. so the, I love this scripture, you know, it's like I'm my whole goal to me as a minister, as a pastor, and as a Christian, and as a follower of Jesus is to seek what, how do, how, how do I get through this situation, God? How would you do this? How would my father do this, Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, and I think it's interesting when we talk about that scripture in uh, Matthew 6 that you just read, you know, we need to seek his kingdom first and think, change the way we're thinking. But um, that part of the portion of that scripture at the end, it says, um, and all these things shall be added to you. But what things are we talking about? See, in that previous scripture in 31, it says, do not worry saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink or what shall we wear? Or like you were referring to, don't worry about your bills and all of that stuff. That's yeah. all. That's all known to God already. Um, but if you seek Him, then all of these things—and He's talking about those things that we were just previously mentioning, worrying about what we will eat, what we will yeah. drink, what we will wear, how we'll pay our bills. Yep. If you seek Him first, it says, 
all these things shall be added to you. You've got to see that in advance. Yep. See it the way God sees it in advance, already taken care of. Yeah. Right? Yeah, that's so important. That's how faith works. You see it, you see it the way God already says it, you know, you in in faith it doesn't not move by what it sees. It calls those things that you want into existence, not the things that it are, mm-hmm. the things that you want change. You start mm-hmm. calling that change in. You say, no, this is changing. My marriage is changing. You don't go around saying my marriage is horrible, it's terrible. And it might be. It might be a fact. But what do you, what do you want it mm-hmm. to be? Mm-hmm. What does the scripture say it can be? And it's not it's not some kind of mystical, magical thing. It's just God's spiritual, spiritual power can mm-hmm. change something that's that's natural that seems unchangeable that's true and the spiritual is the spiritual comes in and changes something supernaturally we've been talking about in our church of that he takes his super and puts it on your natural that's mm-hmm. what divine is mm-hmm. is divine supernatural to change something in the natural that looks unchangeable but spiritual comes down and changes something that looks like to everybody else that's not thinking spiritually minded thinks right. that it's foolishness. Oh, you're going to talk to your mouth. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're going to call those things would be not as though they were. Your bills are right there, Kevin. Yeah. Oh, yeah, their bills are filled. The their bills are paid. You know, they, make, they mock it because uh-huh. they don't understand how spiritual things work. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't understand how God's spiritual can change anything, yeah. anything yeah. that seems like unchangeable. You know, in Elijah, when Elijah <laughs> was walking through that desert and saw dry bones, the Spirit of God told him to prophesy over those bones. And the first thing he was told to prophesy was to speak breath, Yep. right? Now that breath is life. But what's really interesting is that as he continued, the Spirit of God told him to prophesy to the sinews, to prophesy to the flesh, you know, the muscles, everything, yep. right? Because that is our natural mind's order of things. You've got dry bones, and if they're going to live, we've got to put some muscles on it. We've got to put some flesh, some tendons, all of that stuff. But yep. it's interesting that the Spirit of God told him to speak breath first because bones can't breathe. Bones need the, the, the muscles, the sinews, yep. the flesh. It has to be a full, complete thing. But the reason I think he told him to prophesy breath first is because he saw the end before Elijah could see the end. Elijah had to see muscles and flesh and see the body, right, before he could prophesy to the breath. Mm -hmm. And and the Spirit of God was telling him, no, 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 you got to prophesy to what is going to be, right? You need to prophesy to the fullness of the vision, not to what you see today. This is what you see. You see dry bones. But don't prophesy to the dry bones necessarily. Yeah. Prophesy to what those dry bones are going to become, and that's the fullness, the body. Yeah, I mean, it's it's so important, you know. If you want ex- expect great things to happen, you have to you have to you know go into it and do things different than what mm-hmm. you did before. A lot of us we go on. It's like, oh, it's always been this way, you know. In the coming year, it's like you're going through the motions. You do the same things. You go through your same routine, and you're not getting those changes. You're not expecting. You know, don't just start the first part of the year just expecting, okay, I'm, and then and then all of a sudden a couple months go and you haven't seen anything completely like, you know, instant. Right. And so you give up on all that change, you know, just stand with it and say, no, this year I'm not going to give up on my dreams. I'm not going to give up on my desire. I'm not going to give up. And they're not your, I mean, they're your desires, but they're, they're, they're totally in the word of God. They're mm-hmm. God's promises. He promises us that he's going to clothe us, health, provision, peace, joy, good marriage. So it's not something you're making up that, right. that God can't do. Like, well, I can't do that. That's not part of my word. Mm-hmm. No, he said that he will give you the desires of your heart. Don't give up on your dreams. Don't give up on your goals. You know, last time we were talking about working out or whatever. A lot of time that's a big thing for the year. People want to get healthier. They want to do this. So, so don't try to go at it and like, what do they say? You can't just buy it. If you want to take eat an elephant, you got to do it one bite, one bite at, one a, bite time. at a time because it's huge. Mm-hmm. So, like, do one step. Start. I mean, if you've never worked out before, maybe start just walking on the treadmill. Mm-hmm. You know, just walking, doing walking. Don't get all this gear and go into it and say, I'm going to be like a fitness guru at the, in five months. You know, mm-hmm. it's like, and so then you go into it and you, and then you fail because, you know, you got to set, you got to go at it steps. Like yeah. my faith. Gloria and I, I mean, when we, I've been growing in faith, when she got a terminal disease, I was ready for that because God prepared me years ahead of time before she got sick in the things of faith, and I was ready 
for that terminal yeah. report because I had already been getting prepared in faith and learning the scriptures and learning how faith works, learning about healing. So if I was trying to scramble when she got sick and trying to figure it out, it would have been harder to get right. through that right. because I wouldn't, I would not have been prepared ahead of time. So you got to, you got to get yourself prepared for the next year. What mm -hmm. things do I need to do? What things do I need to do in my marriage? What things do I need to do in our ministries to make them bigger and, and expecting, you know, I'm expecting huge, huge blessings in our finances so we can go to the next level mm -hmm. and do more things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, well, you know, in Proverbs chapter 10, verse 28, it says, the hope of the righteous brings joy, but the expectation, and that's key, the expectation of the wicked will perish. So this is talking about two different people, the righteous, and it's talking about the wicked. The wicked will have certain expectations, but they will, they will perish because of their wickedness, yep, right? Yep. Now, if you change the way you think and live and, and uh, you abide in him, when you live with that righteousness in your heart, then it says the hope of the righteous brings joy. The only way it can bring joy is if it's fulfilled, right? right. Because hope that is not fulfilled brings disappointment. Yep. So if the Bible talks about your hope bringing joy, then it's going to be fulfilled. And God is a promise keeper. He will fulfill all of his promises. And the, and the word that we're reading today is the righteous brings joy. The hope of the righteous brings joy. We need to change our mentality, our life, our style, our, our routines. You got to change something. And the thing is, too, is that you know, say, well, I'm not, I don't feel like I'm righteous. Well, you're not walking in your righteousness. You're right. walking in what Jesus clothed us with, in his righteousness, in right standing with God, which does bring joy and brings, you know, the, the wicked when they're without Christ, you know, they're walking in their own, you know, they're still walking without Christ. And so they're walking in that wickedness. But when you come into Christ, even though you have some, maybe some things that you're still hasn't changed, you still have wickedness, he clothes you with your righteousness. So that wickedness is it covered. Right, right. It's covered. Not yeah. that we want to do wickedness anymore, but you're walking in that righteousness, That's which right. is powerful. That's right. Well, and that will help you to expect, expect great things in your life because you make a mistake. And then a lot of times they think, well, I don't feel worthy that God should bless me in my finances. I messed up yesterday. Or I don't feel worthy that I should have a better job because I messed up. Well, praise God, it's not based on your right acts. It's based on God's righteousness and what he clothed you with. Mm -hmm. And so we can walk in that. And that's when I learned that. It helped me walk to a different level because... I still made some mistakes. I still make mistakes today, but uh, because of Jesus' righteousness and what he's done for us, I can still expect the promises that come to pass that I'm not held under my mistakes or held under my unrighteousness mm -hmm. because of Christ's righteousness. You know, we had a testimony in our church this past Sunday of a lady who um, typically has just lived, you know, a normal, modest lifestyle, um, had some... Uh, um, challenges throughout her life and and from time to time she would wonder why things were so hard why bills couldn't get paid blah 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 uh, she changed her mindset she's been coming to our church for a few months now and she changed her mindset to expect greatness from the Lord knowing that even if kind of like Shadrach Meshach and Abednego said even if the Lord doesn't take us out of here we will serve him anyway. So she started doing that no matter what, no matter what her circumstances, no matter how hard uh, her finances got, she served the Lord anyway with joy and with, yeah. and with gladness. So she comes to church Sunday with a testimony. She goes, Pastor Kevin, I've got this testimony. You're not going to believe it. I go, well, what happened? And she said, well, um, the government owed her husband, um, her past husband, uh, some kind of, um, I don't know, some kind of, benefits or whatever but because she has the son um he would have to share part of that with her and i think it was like 700 and something dollars a month this was totally unexpected she just got this announcement that um by the way your husband was supposed to receive these benefits you are a beneficiary who should receive about 700 something dollars a month which just increased her income wow. by 700 something dollars a month she was so excited she goes that's not even the best part it was a mistake that happened two years ago, and they're paying us for all two years that they missed. So she's going to get a She got a check for over $15,000 last week 
completely unexpected. Wow, wow. Her car was broke down. She didn't know how she was going to get around. She went out and bought a new truck. <laughs> <laughs> Paid cash. There we go. And has money in the bank and $700 a month. Why? I believe so you can credit some of this to changing her mindset, serving with joy, even though it gets hard. She had to change something. You know, if you keep doing the same thing over and over again, you're going to get the same results. Yeah, you have to expect and believe, you know. And I was going to read this in Mark 9. I mean, there's a man in the Bible, and his boy is, is sick, and, mm -hmm. and he needs a healing. And they brought him to the disciples, and they couldn't. Uh, it, was, it was, you know, it was a spiritual thing going on. This, I mean, he had these seizures and stuff, and we talk about it. It was actually a de demonic oppression on him and stuff in Mark 9. And so he's going through all this stuff, and then he and he and they they couldn't do anything. The disciples couldn't do anything. They finally brought him to Jesus, and this thing was just convulsing on his son and throwing him down. He had seizures, and he was just believing. You know, I wanted my boy healed, so I took him to the disciples, and and he and he asked Jesus if he could do something. And I think this is a key to have an expectation. If you go through Mark, Mark, it actually starts in Mark nine fourteen. I'm not going to read all this, but go into verse twenty three. Let's read that real quick. Jesus said to him. If you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. So expectation is believing. Mm -hmm. You know, all of us have, an, at times, an, it seems impossible situations. And this man came up with a boy that had been convulsing. You know, he sees his child all the time going through these seizures, falling in the fire, you know, and having him. And, and he's like, okay, Lord, <laughs> He said, Jesus said to him, you know, it's like, okay, here's what you have to do. If you believe, if you can believe, all things are possible. So really, it's like expectation is believing those things mm -hmm. that are come in your life can come to pass, that God can do the impossible situations. Impossible. Like this lady, she changed her mindset and came with a different attitude that God is going to provide. I'm not going to look at my finances. Right. Well, I'm not going to stress out about it. Right. And she got this huge blessing because she started putting uh, demand on God's authority and his power as a child of God, instead of stressing and worrying, she said, I'm going to believe in you. That's right. And the God did the impossible, $15,000 check. Unexpected. New, new, new truck. Mm -hmm. Then on not all of that, money coming in each month. And it uh -huh. wasn't just a one lump sum. Nope. Now she gets an extra $700 a month uh -huh. because she changed the mindset and a lot of expectation and we got, wanting change and new things is expecting that God can do it, believing he can do the impossible. Yeah. A lot of people, they read the scripture, and, yeah, they believe that God can. They say, oh, yeah, God can do the impossible. But do you believe that God yeah. can do the impossible for you? Right. You believe right. God's a supernatural God. You believe that he could do it for Noah, Abraham, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But do you believe that he can take you out mm -hmm. of your situation mm -hmm. or change your life in a different way? Maybe everything's... It's going okay, but you want it to go better. Mm -hmm. Your, you know, your expectation is like you want to get it higher. But it says right here that he, he, is, is that if you can believe, all things are possible. So then after that, immediately, this this thing, he cried out to the Lord. He said, I, "Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief." Mm -hmm. So here's the great thing: is that he said, "I believe. Now help my unbelief." Yeah. Yeah. He goes, okay, Lord, I do believe. Now help my unbelief. And so when you have that attitude, God will show you. Right. Here. Here. Here, the lady from your church, I'll help your unbelief. Yeah. Here's a fifteen thousand dollar check. Here's here's seven hundred dollars extra a month uh -huh. because you believed and you expected and you changed your mindset. These are the things they did. And so if you go through the story, he cast out the dumb spirit and the spirit and he commanded it. And then he raised the boy up. He never had a seizure anymore. That is not recorded that. And because he believed in God. Mm -hmm. You gotta believe in God. You gotta mm -hmm. believe it's gonna be different if you're tuning in. You gotta believe the expectation. Yeah. You gotta believe that, you know, start I mean, I brought this book here. It's a little book. You can get them at the, the Bible book house or you can you can order them online by Charles Capps Ministry. But it's something I read daily. It's just little scriptures in here. I read, start reading over myself, and it's that I expect these things. It's like one of them says, "I am the body of Christ. Satan has no power, man. I'm a over. I overcome evil with good, mm -hmm. you know." And, and some of these scriptures, I am far from oppression. Fear does not come near me. Like if I'm having things, I just take these little book and I I read these things over myself. And so when I'm coming through challenges, like these scriptures build me up, 
and it helps me to to keep going towards those things that seem mm -hmm. unachievable, those expectations that seem like they're way out there. And as I read these little scriptures and stuff, and read them on myself, and and what God says about me, yeah. It's, it's powerful because these gods are recording these in the Bible, not so that God can hear Himself talk, mm -hmm. so that He can, so we can have those scriptures yeah. towards ourselves. Yeah, one of our viewers from Periscope, Nicole, gave us this scripture, which actually was part of my notes in Philippians chapter four, verse ten, talking about being happy and joyful even with the hard times. In Philippians chapter four, verse ten, it says, "But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at last your care for me has flourished again." Though you surely did care, but you lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am, and this is key, this is key, whatever state I am, to be content. Yep. We have to be content with the Lord in whatever state of mind we're in. And I believe Nicole uh, recognized that in this lady that, that was blessed in our church. She changed her mindset to be content with what she already has, and God was able to bless her more. I'd like to, to suggest this, that sometimes, you know, some people would say, well, that was a coincidence, or that would have yeah. happened whether she changed her mindset or not. You know, um, th the truth is, is that the blessing was already there, but... It is our job to change our mindset, go to the Lord in prayer, and with joy unspeakable. And here's the deal, is I believe that by doing so, we actually mobilize and activate God's blessings in our life. Yep. See, the blessings are already there. The Lord already wants you to. He already wants you to succeed. He already wants you to prosper and be of good health. That blessing is already there, but it takes a faith, and a, and a belief and, um, and, a, and a drive and a passion to go to the Lord, it takes that kind of mindset to activate those blessings in our life. Yep. We've got to activate it by trusting Him and going to Him and being faithful and loyal and uh, worshipful and content no matter what, as it says in Philippians chapter 4, verse 10. Yeah, and as you read on there too, it goes down to verse, Scripture 13, which mm -hmm. is nice, uh, which I... You know, I can't do anything in myself, but it says I can do all things. Right. All things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. And that, that that's through that's, Christ. Through is key. Christ. Through Christ, not through anything else, not through my own ability, not through my own self, because I run out of me real quick. Mm -hmm. But he says I can do all things. That covers everything. Through Christ who gives me the strength to get through things and change things and to expect God's best. Don't expect, when if you get a bad report, that this is the final report. Expect that God can change it. Yeah. Expect that I can do all things. No, I can change. I can right. go back to school. I can. I can be everything, and I can change this marriage. I mm -hmm. can do it through Christ. That's the key. Through Christ in his strength. Yeah. So. Well, we've got about two minutes left. PK, real quick, one thing you're going to change in 2016. 2016, uh, I'm going to change uh, spending more time in prayer than I had the fall of previous year. I believe that prayer is a key, and uh, not that I didn't pray before, but praying, praying more, spending uh, s set time just to pray and spend time just for the Lord, not just for the church, but spending that time in prayer, yeah. and increasing my prayer time. That's awesome. For me, one thing I'm going to change is I'm going to try to do my best to serve other pastors every single week one or two or three, however many I can, but to serve other pastors and ministries every single week, doing something to help them build them up That's awesome. every week. That's what I kind of want to yep. do. So what are you going to change? You know, we're talking about change and how God blesses through that. Write us. Go to lifechangersalem.com. Connect with Pastor Kevin and Gloria Pemble, or you can connect with me at uh, clcsalem.org. Tell us what you're going to change in 2016. You know, we talk about... Um, New Year's resolutions, but yep. I'd like to create a New Year's revolution. You know, sure, let's turn make the prayers a out. Okay, let's do it. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for our viewers and thank your you, word. We thank you for the revelation of your word. I pray right now that the word would be rich in our hearts and that it would literally change us. God, we re we desire change. We uh, we welcome change. So God, I pray that we would change in such a way that we bring glory and honor to you. Lord, bless our viewers today, all of them that are watching live on Periscope and on television. God, I pray that you would bless their weekend. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for tuning in. God, God bless, bless you guys. See, See you next time, time on Straight, Straight Talk, Talk with Kevin and Kevin.
Kevin and Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good afternoon. Bless you, brother. All you Periscope viewers.